Hey guys, Nick here from Nick's Taxes, and today I have another Canada news update. We're gonna go over some major case information as well as the vaccine and what that means for stocks and some stocks that I am looking at. So before we dive into the content, hi, I'm Nick, thanks for tuning in. I'm making videos on Canada news updates, the Canada recovery benefits, personal tax and finance. So if you want up to the date information regarding those things, uh, please hit the subscribe button and please hit the thumbs up button as well. It lets me know that you get value out of these videos and you want me to keep making more of these kind of videos. So let's jump right into the content. Today is Tuesday, November the 17th, and here is some news going on in Canada. Up in Nunavut, uh, the COVID case count has more than doubled overnight to 60. It was just a few days ago where they had only a couple cases and now it has jumped up to 60. In Quebec, there has been 982 new cases of COVID and 24 deaths, including five that happened in the last 24 hours. Over in Prince Edward Island, they have decided to make masks mandatory in indoor public places. Over in Manitoba, a private security firm is to crack down on COVID rule breakers starting this weekend. So they're putting a lot more uh, regulations into effect over there. Over in Alberta, hospital visits uh, have more restrictions regarding who can come and visit you in the hospital because of the COVID cases. There's been reports saying that the COVID mortality rate is higher in neighborhoods with more visible minorities. Over in Saskatchewan as well, they have tightened some mandates. They have uh, made the mask wearing mandate uh, mandatory in the entire province, not just areas with a population of 5,000 or more. They are also decreasing uh, the size of gatherings from 10 people down to just five. So families of five or more cannot have visitors in their home, according to the province of Saskatchewan. The other big news obviously that came out earlier this week is a new COVID vaccine from a company called uh, Moderna and this has an effective rate of 94.5%. If you remember earlier, there was another company called Pfizer which had about a 90% effective rate and then there was a vaccine out in Russia that said, hey, ours is a little bit better. And now this company Moderna is saying, hey, ours is a little bit better. So we're seeing almost this vaccine war or uh, race with just a little bit higher uh, effective rate percentages, uh, which means you know it's actually really good, I think, for humanity going forward as we see these uh, developments in science. So that's great. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, in the near future. But here's the thing about the vaccines right now, and according to reports and officials and whatnot, is that because these vaccines are in the very early stages of testing, that while they have these high effective rates, we're not sure if these vaccines are just going to reduce the symptoms, i.e. you can still catch COVID and give COVID to someone else, but just with lower symptoms, or if you will be completely immune, which means that you can't catch it or spread it, kind of like the HPV vaccine. The first one we'll call functional immunity, which means that you can still catch it and spread it, but you'll have the reduced symptoms. This might not be so good because as of right now, there's a report in the US that's saying only 30% of people are willing to take a vaccine and only 50% of medical professionals are willing to take the vaccine uh, at this time. So it's pretty clear that you would think that the medical professionals is gonna be higher than the general population, but to see the medical professionals at only about a 50% rate uh, kind of raises some alarms and uh, highlights the questions and the uncertainties around these vaccines at this time. So there's still a lot of skepticism within obviously the greater community, but more importantly, uh, the medical community. However, the former FDA director thinks that there might be a more stabilized immunity, which means that uh, you will be immune to the disease and uh, unable to give the disease to someone else based on the effective rates. So that can be really good and it can be a really good sign if that is true, um, that once this vaccine comes out, you won't be able to catch it or spread it. So hopefully that's true based on this 94.5% rate. Canada has also uh, purchased a certain amount of 
Modera vaccines just like they did with Pfizer. So if this is the winning vaccine, uh, Canada will have a certain amount of doses and they have enlisted uh, the army actually, believe it or not, uh, to help with the vaccine distribution. Our Canadian military is preparing to help uh, with the COVID distribution. So what does this mean for the stock market? Well, it seems that we have this vaccine bounce back boost to the stock market for industries that have been hit the hardest due to this whole lockdown and pandemic. I'm talking about you know transportation, tourism, uh, retail, and oil. Those kind of areas you've seen have been uh, beaten down a lot since March and haven't really recovered. But with these uh, vaccine news, we're seeing a bounce or a jump in these stock prices. On the contrary, what seems to happen when these kind of news reports get released is that the tech stocks on those days uh, seem to go down a bit. And what I think is happening is that people are selling off their tech stocks and their gains that they've had to buy some of these, we'll call them recovery stocks, the stocks that have been hit harder. So out of the recovery stocks, there's three I'm kind of looking at right now. In the oil and energy sector, I'm looking at Enbridge. In the retail kind of real estate sector, I'm looking at RioCan, and I've made a video on that uh, previously, so you can check that out. And in the travel and tourism, I'm actually looking at Disney. I really like Disney right now because I think there's gonna be a lot of pent up demand uh, for traveling and for attractions, but then Disney also has the streaming service through Disney Plus, so you kind of have a best of both worlds scenario going on there. Airlines is obviously another huge industry uh, that has been hit very hard due to COVID, and while it has bounced back, I'm not super gung-ho yet on airline stocks such as Air Canada. While I do have Air Canada stocks, I'm not looking at buying more at this time. Uh, because of business travelers still holding off on actually traveling for business. I read in a report that only 15% of airline customers are business travelers, but business travelers make up about 75 to 80% of the airline revenues. What happens is businesses and individuals can uh, use travel as tax deductions, and therefore they often spend more money on you know, traveling. It's funny how that works, but uh, you, that's why you see business class being a lot more expensive than economy. And who's typically driving, or sorry, who's typically uh, using the business class and using those more expensive amenities in the airlines? It's those business travelers. So I'm going to hold off there until we see an uptick in business travelers and companies allowing their employees uh, to travel more. And therefore, because I'm not looking at travel, uh, through the air, I'm actually more concerned about uh, domestic travel. And that's again why Disney sticks out to me a lot. Like we'll see a lot of Americans uh, traveling, taking those road trips sort of thing to a place like Disney. Other major news, Tesla, uh, they have announced that they will be part of the S&P 500 in December. And as a result, the stock soared uh, overnight on that share price. Uh, and I think it's still going to continue to go up as there's a lot of hype right now around this event. And I can see this stock easily going back up to $500 plus. It was currently selling, you know, just over 400. And then today it was around 450. And I see that uh, carrying momentum up over 500 and then, you know, hopefully into 600. So if you're looking at uh, short term gains or you're looking at in the long run, uh, this might be a good time now to invest in Tesla because I see a lot of momentum going forward up until it joins the S&P 500 in December. So that's today's Canada's News update and the stocks that I'm looking at. Uh, if you got value out of this video, again, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing uh, to my channel. I'd really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Uh, let me know what you thought below. Let me know what stocks you're looking at or what the current situation of your uh, local area is in regards to the pandemic. Uh, but I will see you guys in the next video. Happy taxing.